Dear sisters, warm and pleasant greetings to everyone. On behalf of the Congregational Leadership Teams and the Bicentenary Committee, I am glad to welcome you all to this last series of webinars on the document, The Gift of Fidelity and the Joy of Perseverance. As we are on our pilgrim journey to make the Bicentennial Jubilee, it's an apt thing to thank God for the wonderful gift of our call. Indeed, it's an invitation to celebrate the gift of our occasion because God has called us and chosen us from many to spread the message of his love. Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 16 says, You did not choose me, I chose you. That was where it all began. It's this venture into the unknown, following an unheard voice, an unseen face into an unfathomable future. We had a mysterious attraction to that childhood, God who suddenly or gradually caught hold of our lives and would not let us go. Concerning our vocation, Father Wolf said, Children, are you sufficiently aware that you have been lucky? I have the feeling that you have been exposed to many dangers. God, in his infinite goodness, has taken you out of this world, or rather, has pulled you out of the world, because he foresaw all the things that might have happened to you. For that reason, you cannot thank him enough for all the things he has done for you. Therefore, consecrated life is beautiful and meaningful if it is lived in service and commitment. It is a joyful and loving life. It is the vow of love. In the words of Pope Francis, a joyless community is one that is dying. The people of our time are waiting for words of consolation. For words of consolation. The availability of forgiveness and true joy. We, the consecrated, are called to share this joy with a mother's tenderness as facilitators, not as controllers of grace. The church is not a refuge for sad people, but a house of joy. Dear sisters, God's call is ever new, new every moment. It's joyful and meaningful only if we are attuned to his voice. Shortly, we are going to listen to the insightful session by our Superior General, Sister Inama Eru, on the document, The Gift of Fidelity and the Joy of Perseverance. Before we begin the session, let's prepare ourselves and implore God's blessings for today's input session and sharing. We pray for the Spirit of God to animate the resource person, Sister Inama, and the sisters who will be sharing their reflection thereafter. May I now invite Sister Sandhya to lead the opening prayer. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in your name we come into your presence. You have revealed yourself as the Father of life. We praise you for the fatherly care which you extend to all creation and especially to us, the sisters of the congregation of JMJ. We thank you for the call to consecrated life. We have heard the voice of your son calling us to live the gift of our vocation with fidelity and experiencing the joy of perseverance. We thank you, Father, for the document, the gift of fidelity and the joy of perseverance, which invites us to reflect on our vocation 
formation, fidelity, and perseverance. We pray that this session enlightens us to rediscover our charism and enable us to introspect ourselves on our discernment, commitment, coherence, continuity, constancy, dedication, and love. O Divine Spirit, wellspring of everlasting happiness, pour into our souls the gift of joy that by its sweet and powerful influence, we may be stimulated to serve you wholeheartedly and render our service to humanity cheerfully and generously in every circumstance. Spirit of God, help us to enter the input session with a personal conviction that each one of us is called to continue our consecrated journey with a gift of fidelity and the joy of perseverance. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sandhya, for imploring the Spirit of God on today's conference. Thank you. Dear sisters, our time is a time of trial. It is more difficult to live as a consecrated person in today's world. The struggle for fidelity and the lack of strength to persevere are experiences which belong to the history of religious and consecrated life since its very beginning. The document, The Gift of Fidelity and the Joy of Perseverance is dedicated to the problem of those who have abandoned consecrated life, which Pope Francis himself described as a hemorrhage weakening consecrated life and the very life of the church. In this perspective, the present document intends to provide guidelines which are based on the norms of the Code of Canon Law that are useful to all the consecrated persons and to all those who have the roles of responsibility, both in governance and in formation. Yes, dear sisters, as this document rightly brings forth that in consecrated life, one cannot walk alone. We need someone to accompany us, someone who helps, recognizes and corrects our attitudes, lifestyles, shortcomings and infidelities that are an evident counter testimony to the state of consecrated life. I deem it as my privilege to welcome Sister Inamma Erwa, the Superior General and the guest speaker of today's session. May I invite Sister Luisa Miranda, the Provincial Counselor of Bangalore Province, to introduce Sister Inamma to this virtual platform. Thank you, Sister Jayashila. Dear sisters, I have the privilege of introducing our dear Reverend Sister Inama Erva, the Superior General, the resource person for today's webinar. The scripture says, No eye has seen no ear has heard and no mind has Im imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. It's true with Sister Inama as we view her personal profile. Sister Inama was born on 15th of March 1956 in Warangal district. No doubt she grew with wisdom, knowledge of God, and with full conviction, joined the Society of Jesus Mary Joseph on 27th July, 1973, and bloomed beautifully wherever she had been planted. We are witnesses to it. At the beginning, she worked as principal 
in St. Joseph's Junior and Degree College, Kannur, from 1983 to 1996, and from 2009 to 2014. Also, as a principal of JMJ Degree College and Junior College, Pedda Pendiala, from 2015 to 2018. <clears throat> At first, she served the Hyderabad province as provincial councillor from 1996 to 2000, and later appointed as the provincial superior for nine years from 2000 to 2009. While she was the provincial superior she extended her splendid service to the national CRI as the president till 2009. She is a person of faith and full of Holy Spirit, a charismatic leader, an excellent orator who can make her audience spellbound, an outstanding administrator, an animator, an eminent educationist, our excellence with a go-getter attitude, endowed with unique talents and skills, and has adorned different roles to her credit and contributed much to the growth of the province and the congregation at large. As Superior General, since 2018, she willingly responded to the clarion call to establish the kingdom of God with an ever adaptable apostolic availability to be a vessel of hope for the members of the congregation. From there, the first congregational chapter directive statements were brought forth with a team spirit under her skilled leadership. Dear Sister Innamma, you are indeed a leader with vision and mission. We treasure your uniqueness and value your esteemed presence, for you have a special way of looking at the people and world with your simple gesture of love and patience. We see something beautiful in you and we wish God's choicest blessings upon you as you unfold the theme of today. We wish you all the best. Hearty welcome to you, dear sister. Thank you, Sister Luisa, for introducing Sister to the virtual platform. Over to you, Sister Inamma. Thank you, Sister Jaisila and Sister Luisa for many words. I feel humbled to listen to all those words, but I accept in uh, humility and it's all God's grace if something has been done by me as a contribution to our congregation. Thank you very much. Dear sisters, welcome to the last congregational webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm most happy to welcome you to have a sacred journey through the gift of fidelity and the joy of perseverance. The gift of fidelity, the joy of perseverance, is a document issued by the Congregation for Institutes of Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life. It is said, fidelity, despite the eclipse of this virtue in our time, is engraved in the profound identity of the vocation of consecrated persons. The reflections and the inspirational thoughts that we will do together are very familiar to us. 
but in reality and in living of these essential dimensions of the consecrated life are not familiar unfamiliar which we have to get familiar to to know the background all of us are aware on 2nd february 2020 on the feast of the presentation of the lord the sickle cell released this document the gift of fidelity and the joy of perseverance guidelines and on march 27th 2020 it published the document very specially touching on recurrent and troubling problems in consecrated life the perseverance of the members sister jaisila in her words of introduction has already given us a gist of those problems and the recurrent troubles that the consecrated people are facing our time is a time of trial already sister said and the struggle for fidelity and the lack of strength to persevere are experienced right from the beginning of the consecrated life nothing is new now but what is more important is that fidelity has to do with the meaning of our life before god and the church perhaps which we are becoming very oblivious of that and to remain in god's love because today's culture is provisional we know that and it is influencing all the sectors of human life and very especially the consecrated life so when persons think about the forever oh it is forever not permanent so the forever is very weak and affirms for francis any reason is valid to leave the path take in god service gifts are experienced by the grace of conversion that sustains an authentic fidelity that is far from being sterile for us now a reflection is our vocation provisional or forever is it sterile or fruitful we have a responsibility to answer god the church and the congregation but how do we find adequate solutions possessing an attitude of listening and discernment as we continue with our reflection sisters we keep on hearing these words over and over again and again which means how important they are imploring with the trust the light of the holy spirit to read the reality we say it is reality but do we really accept the reality in a very serious and serene manner the situations cast shadows on the evangelical credibility of the institute institutes and undermine the trust of the people of god towards world of consecrated persons and in the recent times we have heard number of examples and we have seen number of examples how the people of god are lo- are losing trust in the life of the consecrated persons and therefore sickle cell try to offer some guidelines on the basis of the norms of the code of canon law and the practice of dicastery that are useful to all consecrated persons fidelity and perseverance were emphasized by pope francis when he addressed the plenary assembly of sickle cell on 28th january 2017 he said already sister jaya noted this we are facing a hemorrhage it's it's a very strong powerful word that is weakening consecrated life and the very life of the church is something happening to see jmj real mental emotional psychological hemorrhage do we also undergo a crisis i think we must say yes when we look at the situations so therefore it is a question for us to reflect because it cannot fall on deaf ears due to the complexity and the delicacy of the situation the only solution that the document gives to us is remain in my love from gospel of st john 15 9 i think at the end of this webinar all of us need to register only this word i request that all of us are you know imbibed or ingrained with this one scriptural word remain in my love and that is the panacea for all our problems 
yeah the document is divided into three parts already most of you must have gone through already so it has three parts the first parts part deals with gazing and listening very very powerful but simple words secondly enkindling awareness which is related to our centenary theme that we need to be rekindled with the spirit of our founder and thirdly separation from the institute canonical norms and the practice of the dicastery the total number of articles are 106 in this document yeah cardinal carbello secretary congregation for institution institutes of consecrated life he says the first chapter that is gazing and listening is the perception of reality and it is dealt with uh, articles 5 to 22 the second chapter dealing with enkindling awareness i think we remember is a strong invitation for each person to take seriously the responsibility of this fidelity and perseverance to which the church constantly calling us articles 23 to 61 deal with this chapter and the third is purely canonical of course for our webinar we are not going to touch that later we will deal with it some other time article 62 to 98 deal with this canonical matters when problems arise in the journey of fidelity in perseverance they demand to recognize and avaru mother general mother general mother general She is in Rome. She is in Rome. She is the one. Yeah, Christine. So when problems arise, we need to recognize and discern our story of life, our own story of life, to question ourselves about the fidelity born of love, to learn to listen to our own conscience. to cultivate a well formed conscience gifted with the right judgment to discipline the attention of our interior life to welcome the gift of divine grace the promise and the pledge of remaining in god's love now these could be the signs of precarious faithfulness towards infidelity that we see and experience of course in our own congregation so therefore the document presents current difficulties of members and departures in the institutes of consecrated life and as well as secular institutes it proposes some indications regarding the accompaniment of sensitive situations and congregations with the norms of canon law and sickle cell practices that must be respected in such situations so let's get into a little more deeper way the reflections about the document we have the synopsis of the chapter 1 chapter 1 yeah okay on a subject as delicate as leaving consecrated life it is important to offer both an attentive look and sincere listening already mentioned discernment of the person concerned of the accompanier and the community is even more necessary than elsewhere this speaks about Uh, the role of the each individual the spiritual mentor and the community where the sister resides this phenomenon of infidelity affects the church in general and also touches us as a congregation yeah so we now go into the synopsis of uh, chapter 1 i think we remember the chapter 1 deals with gazing and listen yeah so it has two components one is the phenomenon of departures it deals with some critical issues secondly it deals with instances to be interpreted and dynamics to be converted so the first part the first part deals with uh, a phenomenon that questions us next slide yeah abandonment of consecrated life after a long period of initial formation or after many years of consecrated life is not normal let us pay attention on that word sisters it not normal however justified by the socio cultural causes sometimes we may find the situations and symptoms a watered down and mediocre life devoid of meaning 
dampening the joy we had at the beginning of our journey. I think this is a, a strong phenomena that we need to uh, pay attention to. Next. Yeah, there are some forms of discomfort, discomfort, very especially that generate uneasiness in life. All of us go through, it is quite normal. But for Francis acknowledges these risks arise from the culture of our time. What is that our time? We live immersed in the so-called culture of fragmentation of the provisional. Everything we want only temporary, nothing is permanent. And therefore, we take also religious life for granted. It is crucial, therefore, to recognize the problems and listen to those who are facing them. Yeah. So let us let us be aware of the word listening, recurring and recurring how many times. So the next uh, reflection is we need to have a watchful gaze and attentive listening. Nowadays, they are calling as a generative listening, the psychologist. So, but it should be nourished by the light and strength of the Holy Spirit. To recognize is learning, to discern and to discover what keeps us far from the real human dramas. But it requires humility, closeness and prayer to perceive and to be attuned to the joys, hopes and anxieties of the people. It's beautifully said, it's a gaze of compassion, not pity. Compassion comes from the gut level, you know, arising from the freedom born of love and of the desire to put the good of others before all else. Good of others. It's, it's, it's a value for us. How, how are we practicing? It's a reflection for us. And this requires to initiate paths of spiritual accompaniment, psychotherapy and care. And exactly this is what we are trying to introduce in our formation houses with the formis. Yeah, next. Crisis of the institutes, uncertainty and disorientation. Now here the document calls for us to call to mind the original attractiveness, the initial fervor that we had when we said we have vocation, we want to serve God, we want to be in God's service forever, etc. That consecrated life had in the past needs to be rediscovered and encouraged as an antidote to the paralysis of normality. An openness to race that turns the world and its ways of thinking upside down. So what is that originality? Now, when we are talking about sanctuary celebrations, we are constantly calling ourselves, go back to the roots, go back to the original spirit. It is the same, that we need to go back to the original attractiveness of the call of God that has come to us. And secondly, rekindling the allure of evangelical radicalism. Yeah. Among younger generations, and it cannot be neglected at a time dominated by consumeristic and commercialistic mindsets. So we need to change our mindset if I want to be follow Christ, if I want to follow Christ really radically. So Pope Francis notes that when in the life of communities we experience a certain listlessness, it's a bad sign. Maybe we need to reflect all our communities, including our community in the general aid too. It is a bad sign that we are trying to find shelter from the wind of the spirit. We want to deviate maybe from the light and the light of the gospel. Yeah, next. An obscure attraction. Yeah. Discomfort and uneasiness undermine the credibility of consecrated life. All of us say, you know, I want to be a credible witness. Definitely the desire is good. But the consecrated person is not a bureaucrat or a functionary but a passionate person who cannot live in dull and dreary mediocrity. Yeah, we have to think, we have to reflect. And Pope Francis states, none of us should be dull, disconnected and dissatisfied, but a gloomy disciple is a disciple of gloom. Yeah, maybe a serious face, a dull face, you know, irritated face. All of us, all of us are going through that sometimes. In the midst of all these things, he says, we should be able to discover perfect joy because call to consecrated life is to live a life of joy. All of us know, all of us know, but we are trying to practice it in our daily life. The inadequate evaluation of the difficulties. When we, when we confront the difficulties, sometimes we are not able to adequately evaluate them because 
normally we do not speak of our difficulties and keep almost hidden either of the community province or institute for reluctance to expose our weaknesses in contrast we observe the phenomenon terrorism of gossip is it prevalent with us too it's a reflection denounced by pope francis he he condemned that terrorism of gossip which certainly does not help to create a climate of serene and respectable community life generally the new admissions are public publicized and the departures are privatized we 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 don't dare tell others no so many have left from our congregation but many and many more more facilities vocations are facilitated we say with joy with this year we got so many vocations so that that's the tendency yeah so that that's the first part uh, uh, first part in the first part of the gazing and listening now the second reflection goes like this instance instances to be interpreted and dynamics to be converted you know it speaks of many many components here we may not be able to deal with everything in uh, very detail but maybe one or two sentences i will try to share share with us and we try to reflect together yeah next so the first thing is identity building processes in the identity building processes difficulties and fragilities have become increasingly complex both at the level of aware awareness and acceptance of oneself causing relational disorders i think this is uh, one of the areas that we need to pay attention the relational ship relational problems or relationship problems or relational disorders whether they are existing in our community we need to look very deeply but these also can become an opportunity for purification positively you know transformation and wisdom through the experience of grace which renders possible obedience to the call and also in the perspective of the pascal mystery we need to consider the environment with eyes of trust god made christ the source of eternal life for all who obey him so christ is our model faith and illusory light trust must grow says pope francis many times you will you will hear in our reflections the quotes of pope francis because they are very very relevant precisely when circumstances throw us to the ground i think it is our experience definitely in those times the faith appears as an illusory light and ends up and ends up being associated with darkness but sometimes it can also happen the sudden decision taken to leave the institute by any of the religious consecrated person without dialogue and encounter leaving the situation very incapable of finding a solution maybe sometimes we are going through that trauma of experience and the refusal to be helped perhaps indicates the denying of god visiting from on high and we know when mary visited elizabeth what grace has come upon her and upon her house and upon the child that she was bearing yeah the way of understanding and living consecrated celibacy it all depends on how i understand and how i want to live constructing one's own identity affects the way consecrated celibacy is understood and lived the effective crisis leads to dramatic implications that is a narcissistic cultural context those who have studied psychology would know would know this is always seeking pleasure and nothing else and pope francis says said one of the worst attitudes to a religious is to mirror himself is narcissism that i want only seek pleasure and pleasure pleasure and pleasure and nothing else and no commitment so to say the processes that are required a lucid and available decision making capacity and love from the need for position against all forms of effective dependence so we need to have a suitable lucid means open flexible available decision making capacity which we need to train ourselves and train our younger generations a liquid fidelity yeah an open fidelity the difficulty in understanding consecrated celibacy cannot disregard the so called bonding issue we sing beautifully you know bind us together lord but do we understand what is this bonding issue this relational problem must be solved to prevent the loss of perseverance remaining faithful is no longer taken for granted and even less so is remaining faithful for life 
yeah we see even in uh, in the ordinary world in the sacrament of marriage you know but it is so slowly percolating even down to the consecrated life that as long as i want i i be here as I, i don't want then you know i step out without reason sometimes valid reason yeah but fidelity is an integral part of freedom the gift of self in following the lord is the gift of one life one life out of love i think this we need to emphasize for ourselves each of us individually that following the lord is the gift of one life in another life we don't know whether we have we do not know but that life has to be lived out of love but this gift too can have a time limit and it will definitely have time limit the meaning of a rule oriented bond of course in the congregations especially in the religious congregations we have a lot of rules regulations and norms but what does the car document bring us to our awareness the rule oriented bond can fuel a misleading sense of auto- autonomy invoked in the name of spontaneity impulsiveness and the claiming of one's own space for the sake of the common good you know sometimes you know we want to be independent we want to be free we want to enjoy a little bit of you know free time that's good it's nothing wrong but what is the importance of the rule that is set for a religious community so to the extent that emphasis is placed on individualism one turns away from the commitment to consider that one's own well-being is linked to and dependent on that of community and therefore the need to increase the coherence of all in fidelity to following a rule so rule has its own place its importance and when it comes to the common good we all of us have to abide by that does not however take away our individualism and there has to be a perfect blend of understanding the what is our bonding to the community by way of rule and what is that that individually we definitely can pursue creatively to live our consecrated life the yeah, next the relationship with time and space yeah we we, we know about time and space this is another discomfort in our relationship you know for our growth and development but what is important is sometimes i i i don't know but what the document says to us wasting time impoverishes fidelity and perseverance an idle mind is devil's workshop we say no knowing how to manage time is a healthy sign of a mature ability to choose the phenomenon of consecrated person on the verge of burnout and practically jobless must not be underestimated since we made a covenant both with god and with the community we need to live our time with the faithful witness jesus christ who will ask for an account of our time yeah we are answerable for whatever is given to us not only time our talent energy and everything difficult interpersonal and community relationships this is one of the most important area that we need to emphasize and concentrate on the uneasiness created by the difficulty of relationships suffers interpersonal communication reducing it to common acts punctuated by the clock you now some of, some of us are you know restless we, we don't want to communicate with each other and we look at the watch and we say it is time it is time it, it's a reality i i i begin with myself but against this what pope francis says he is urging us to reclaim the value of community life which preserves us from growing consumeristic individualism that leads us to isolate ourselves in a quest for peer well-being apart from others our life our gift of vocation is a charisma to be lived with others for a jmj sister it is the community we born in a we are born in a community and we die in a community relationship with time and space so once again the same idea is being uh, referred here so the difficulties in interpersonal relationships can trigger discomfort and painful experience of solitude exposing many risks of going into isolation i don't want to relate anybody okay uh, i i undergo so many problems you know i undergo hurt i undergo this i undergo that and i want to be isolated sometimes it leads us it is nobody's fault but what is important here is that esteem and friendship from the community helps to break this cycle of isolation so we need to be aware in our own communities whether this is happening and if this is happening what is the measure that we can take but solitude on the other hand can become fruitful when it is inhabited by the presence of god so always the power is in the presence of god to whom we surrender our life in the presence of the community members 
So both have to be balanced for us, the presence of God and the presence of the community members, which helps us to come out of ourselves to rediscover the gift of the other. The tension between community and mission, I think uh, very often we meet this with, yeah? But if it is not resolved, it can lead to conflicts, dissatisfaction or disappointment. But it can also be an opportunity for creating in innovation, investing in new energies and joint projects. No, like Corona effect, you know, it's, it's, it is bad, okay? Shook the world. But then positively, it had many, many advantages, benefits for humanity and for us too. So a fruitful collaboration of this tension leads to personal and community change and presents a twofold challenge to the quest for unity. Unity and harmony, which are very specially emphasized in our constitutions for making an ecclesial community. Unresolved conflicts undermine the sense of belonging to the Institute and ultimately can discourage one's life choice to such an extent that abandoning the Institute is considered the only way out. Sometimes we, we go to that crisis. There is no, no other focus before us except to leave the Institute, to abandon the Institute. That's all. Nothing works out. Nobody can talk to us. Nobody can guide us. No, I decided and then I want to go. So maybe sometimes when religious enter into such situations, we need to be aware and then bring down that tension between the community and the mission of a person. Management of the digital world, I think I need not say, sisters, we know the effect positively, negatively, yes. But what is important is what I want to draw. Digital media, according to Pope Francis, can block the development of authentic interpersonal relationships. Yeah, I think it's a point of concentration for us when our constitution is asking us to have community meal, community recreation, community press. Sometimes are we bound by this digital media? It's a point of reflection Yeah, for all of us. Next. Next slide. Yeah. Relationship with power and position. Yeah, it's a very, very uh, ordinary term that we all of us use. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, craving for power and position. Yeah. In every human relationship, the thirst for power and worldly interest often stands in our way. It's quite normal. It's quite human. But what is important is it happens even with those who have doctrinal and spiritual convictions making them fall a prey for power or human glory at all costs, rather than giving their lives for others in mission. And that's why we need real grace, real grace, all of us. So the document, New Wine, New Wine Skins, yeah, some time ago, Sister Lima led with this, uh, guided us, clearly speaks about this to the point of degenerating into forms of author authoritarianism. So that's why we have in our constitution mentioning decentralized administration, principles of administration, so that none of us have real craving for power and position. Yeah. So that's part one, sisters, part one. Uh, again, I repeat, part one dealt with the gazing and listening. And as um, Cardinal Carabello said, it gives us into the perception of the reality. Now, these are some of the realistic situations that we confront in our religious congregations. Now, part two deals with enkindling awareness and it highlights three areas. It highlights three areas. So the first area is about fidelity and perseverance. I must acknowledge, dear sisters, during this, I mean, in this part two, very many times these words are interchangeably used. Likewise, also the discernment, accompaniment, accompaniment and discernment. So I, do, I don't think we need so much of explanation, but however, I try to be quick and then see what really uh, the elements that are highlighted in order to kindle our awareness of the reality of the situations, problems, difficulties, fragilities, vulnerabilities that we as consecrated people are going through in our congregations, in our communities. Yeah. Next slide. Yeah, first one is memor Memoria Dei. It just means, it just means to remember the Lord's action because fidelity is me measured by time, history, everyday life. Because we are going back to the original the spirit of our congregation, we say, the roots of the congregation because it's a history, past history. But our, day, our everyday life is being guided that. 
So we need to remember the Lord's action, what the Lord has done beautiful, beautifully marvelous deeds that God has done. The faithful one holds together the memory and the present and this enables him to persevere. So in order to persevere, we need to constantly remember, ponder over, like our mother Mary pondered over the things which, which she has hidden in her heart. Yeah, next. God is the faithful one. We know God is faithful one. And the whole history of salvation is the story of the covenant between God and his people and prophet uh, Hosea speaks of God's fidelity as proof of God's tenacious love for his people. But one thing what I want to highlight here is what Pope Francis speaks is the spousal love of Jesus for the church. It has three features which are very important. One is the church is faithful and it perseveres preserves and it is fruitful and it is very very relevant for our vocation when God called us we need to be faithful we need to persevere and we need to be fruitful and bearing abundant fruit fruit that is enduring yeah. Next. Christ's iconic image of fidelity we know that yeah Jesus is faithful to weak humanity Jesus Christ is amen of fidelity Jesus is the faithful witness and we know from the story of the Bible, even though Israel was not a faithful servant and has repeated the infidelity of the generation, God has not ceased to demonstrate his fidelity. And that is the greatness of God, awesomeness of God. Sometimes we are unfaithful, but God is never ever faithful, unfaithful. So it, as St. Paul says, it is not I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Fidelity is nourished by encounter. Encounter, we know, encounter also is very familiar for us in our congregation, the magazines, yeah. And our uh, chapter theme is encountering together. It touches the totality of the person, intellect and will, mind and heart. And we know faith is the mystery of the encounter generated by the spirit. Encountering the Lord opens the disciple to the fullness of life. We know the example of the disciples of Emmaus. To persevere memory and hope. Previously, we said Memoria Dei. Also, Pope Francis is uh, emphasizing this. He recommends that we all persevere following two indications. One is memory and hope. And what is that? Memory is to remember the happy days of encounter with the Lord. And hope is that when we are attacked by temptations, we always look to the Lord, not to ourselves, but we look to the Lord because perseverance is a gift of God, of the covenant that we made with God to remain faithful in our consecrated life. Yeah, To persevere in fidelity. So as I told you, sisters, repeatedly this, these words will be coming. The combination of fidelity and perseverance has characterized the magisterial teaching of the consecrated life. And these two terms are inseparable aspects of a single spiritual attitude. So we can say the fidelity and perseverance are the spiritual attitude like the B attitudes. And we know perseverance is an essential attribute of fidelity combined with humility. So Prophet Mika says we need to walk humbly with God, humbly with God. So the very life of consecrated men and women is therefore defined by their persevering and humble fidelity to consecration. So these are all virtues that we need to acquire as we grow in the gift of our vocation. Next, yeah. Total and exclusive love. St. John Paul VI described perseverance as an assurance that consecrated persons have irrevocably offered their lives and are fully faithful to their calling. And in his subsequent encyclicals, he had emphasized on being faithful to their own vocation. I, you and we, all of us need to be faithful to the gift of vocation that is given to us. Mary, the model of perseverance, I think I no need to say that. Yeah? St. <laughs> John Paul II exhorted Mary among all persons consecrated unreservedly to God and she is the first. I think that would be sufficient. Now, a document of Vita Consecrata. So, this has been the expression perseverance and fidelity. It uh, constitutes most effective interpretive keys for reading together. And it is beautifully said she is uh, a solitary boast of humankind, you know, solitary boast among the humankind. Only Mary can be 
boasted to be the most faithful consecrated person offering her life to god it's a path of increasing fidelity so throughout salvation history god's fidelity towards every man and woman manifest in itself in creativity so therefore our fidelity is dynamic so today i am faithful tomorrow i am unfaithful no our faithfulness is continuous and it is dynamic depending on the reading of the signs of the times what we want to preserve must be continually updated that's very important fidelity to the people of our time means to love and serve them according to the heart of christ and modeled on the trinity yeah next perseverance on the path of holiness yeah you see the beautiful figure over there the saints and the martyrs it consists as document says in two ways one is the holiness is prescribed in our constitutions which coincides with the path of holiness to be confirmed to christ so that they can be witnesses and collaborators in christ's redemptive work so as religious con as religious consecrated people we need to follow the guidelines that are given in our constitutions because the principle of love we we are guided by the ideal of love in all that we do for greater glory and honor of god next yeah fraternal life a place of perseverance i think this is another area sisters we need to pay attention the role of fraternal life in the perseverance of consecrated persons needs to be deepened when we read from our constitutions the articles on community life will bear witness to this the apostolic community of jerusalem is a model of religious life you know the first christian community uh, the life that is fashioned on the model of early church also is our example and it should continue to be lived in prayer and in the communion of the same spirit co responsibility for the fidelity of brothers and sisters yeah this needs no saying because the quality of fraternal life has a significant impact on the perseverance of individual religious just as the poor quality of fraternal life has been the reason for leaving religious life yes or no yeah we need to reflect for ourselves therefore each member has the sense of core responsibility for the faithfulness of the other each one contributes a serene climate to acquire the value of a sign of abiding fidelity to god yeah persevering in prayer prayer yeah a james a sister is interiorly possessed by god only that word i can say sisters yeah the first support to perseverance is a continuous prayer for the grace of fidelity with humility and steadfastness unless we are open to the holy spirit to the grace of the holy spirit yeah. so saint paul said pray ceaselessly yeah next next slide formation foundation for perseverance i think this is what we are struggling sisters in our congregation with combined formation for formation process it is a two fundamental attitudes are necessary just two words i say humility excuse me sister excuse me sister so this time we notice now sisters kindly because uh, yeah i don't know stuff from ghana i think i'm un unable to mute myself yeah okay next yeah two basic attitudes humility knowledge and practice of spiritual discernment which we must be able to recognize the presence of the holy spirit in all aspects of life and history so therefore the mediation of a spiritual guide of course again in the constitutions it is mentioned those who are in need of must seek the help of a spiritual guide and again with a concept rata speaks about this next yeah the joy of perseverance again and again we only are reminded by the words of uh, pope francis a fundamental cause of eternal life is identified in the witness of joy which constitutes a further encouragement to perseverance hmm? yeah i think we are aware of this but i want to bring to our notice pope francis speaks of joy a consecrated person has no reason to be sad 
he said about uh, gloom i yeah, remember yeah for him joy is not a useless embellishment but rather a necessary foundation of human life joy true joy is contagious it is infectious it impels one forward i think we need to remember these uh, beautiful words uh, every day and try to practice in our communities that we are all joyful and therefore we can persevere in the gift of occasion next so the second part of this uh, second uh, portion is enkindling awareness so there are certain elements again that are uh, emphasized here process for shared discernment yeah i think you will agree with me now how often we are trying to repeat uh, the words discernment listening accompaniment and uh, the, uh, this this point also speaks about what are the processes that we can take when we meet with uh, various difficulties vulnerabilities in our religious congregations yeah yeah maybe everything we don't need uh, de- uh, read detail one is the school of life and we know fidelity is a precious gift contained in earthen vessels we read from the letter of st paul but i want to uh, uh, pay attention to the uh, what is in red the fidelity can become a precious gift only if it is possible we look at the consecrated life as a school of life it's a journey it's a school it's a study you know where in relationship with others we all learn to love god to love the brothers and sisters with whom we live that is the emphasis with whom we live and to love humanity which is in great need of god's mercy and fraternal solidarity i think this the, 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 this is the emphasis this is the emphasis and therefore uh, you know educational perspectives of the church also we need to study and that's why we are also concentrating on the documents of the church in the spirit of the universal church that we need to understand our religious life consecrated living yeah next working together for shared discernment so our constitution once again sister speaks about shared vision and shared mission this is the same as shared discernment when somebody is in difficulty how do i share how do i discern that problem this is what you know but there are two moments here at the moment of initial discernment and at the moment of deciding to live consecrated life there is a gap you know initial discernment and the moment of deciding it is at that time exactly that we need to come to the rescue of that person to live that moment with a clear orientation emotional support and common commitment to address the problems in this respect we share with the practice of shared discernment remains central to the credibility and reliability of the life and mission so it is it is a shared discernment even the vocation crisis is a shared discernment that we need to uh, bring home to us yeah next yeah discernment and accompaniment as i told you sisters yeah after the second vatican council there has been a growing acknowledgement of the ministry of discernment and accompaniment not only for those who are going through times of crisis but also for those who are while persevering wish to remotivate the sense of their own fidelity that's very important so accompaniment discernment are inseparable they are one single entity so therefore uh, it has become now after the second vatican council a ministry like the education ministry health care ministry this also has become a beautiful ministry that we need to practice in our community living Next. Sister Nama, just one minute, Sister. I like to say, Sister yeah. Shanti Mary, who is in the Zoom meeting, Sister Shanti Mary, uh-huh. and I see J M J Convent. Uh-huh. Can you please be aware that you are um, talking in between and we hear. Um, it will be Thank good, you. Sister Shanti Mary, and someone in the name J M J Convent. Thank, Thank you. Please be aware. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Next. the formation of conscience yeah <laughs> the capacity to discern is inseparable from the formation of conscience we know from right from our childhood we have been taught about this sisters uh, what is important is the centrality of the conscience does not mean following my own ego doing what interests me what suits me what i like yeah maybe sometimes some of us use these expressions including me 
I think we need to become aware of this. The chapter is speaking about enkindling awareness. Conscience is the most secret core and sanctuary of a person. This is important. Conscience is the most secret core and sanctuary of a person. Yeah. Okay, next, next time. Yeah. Yeah, self-understanding sisters. Yeah, now self-esteem, self-understanding, beautiful psychological traits, psychological values. Yes, definitely. What the document says is, among the fundamental forms of discernment and accompaniment, one is self-understanding. I have to know myself. It's a gospel word. Love, your, love others as you love yourself. The same. So vocation is a gift lived with profound gratitude to the Lord, the life that Jesus gives us, for Francis repeats, to the youth. Is a love story, a life history that wants to blend with ours, sink roots to the soil of our own lives. So it is, it is a, a deep understanding, you know, self-actualization. Maslow, psych psychologist says, no? Maslow's theory, highest uh, theory is self-actualization. So only such self-understanding is capable of helping a person to take a definitive step forward, the future uh, choice of life. Yeah. Gift and task. Yeah, I think this doesn't need any explanation. I think our vocation is a gift and our vocation is a responsibility. And very especially from a Christian perspective, our life on earth reaches full stature when it becomes an offering. And when it becomes an offering, if held back, life is lost. On the other hand, it is re-given, then it is re-found with surprising fullness. For whoever wishes to save life, we know from the gospel, this is the Pascal dimension of our life. The more you give, the more you save. God loves a cheerful giver. Next. Yeah, responsible freedom. So all of us, responsibility. Freedom with responsibility we talk about, no? Yeah. So to respond to our vocation, we need to foster and develop all that we are it has to do with finding our true selves in the light of God and letting ourselves flourish and bear fruit. Formation to perseverance is to be understood not as a voluntary effort centered on oneself. No, it aims to reawaken, to revive the disposition to respond to the gift received, practicing a refined interior sensitivity. We have a beautiful... Uh, spirit of the Christian institution, no? interior spirit and exterior spirit both have to be blended together. That interior sensitivity of which we are not always aware. We need to become aware. Next. Yeah. Dialogue between consciences, the word and the good. So, yeah, what we say and what we do. That's it, you know. So, a person must express her feelings through words in dialogue lest she becomes a prisoner of feelings. So somewhere we have to have a let out of our feelings. Naturally, it's but human. And the good that can happen in her relationship with others would be at stake if, they, if he or she doesn't ex express. This requires a continuous and permanent moral formation, educating personal freedom to discover personal motivation. Yeah. Next. Defining choice, definitive choices. So to think that nothing can be definitive is a deceptive lie. Yes, it can be definitive, provided I make a choice, you know. Living in the context of liquid society, the sense of definitive choices has disappeared. You know, free society, I want to do this way. I have my pleasure. I have my will. I have my individualism. I have my freedom. You know, that's it. So today's socio-cultural context is characterized by an openness to new opportunities in which the definitive decision reached often appears to be disturbingly fragile. It is disturbing. New things are good. Opportunities are good. New ways of thinking, thinking is good. But it, dis, it dis, they should not disturb our definitive choice of life that we have made for God. Next. Yeah. Discovering new facts. So when we accompany a person in moments of crisis, one should allow new evidence to be discovered to bring to completion the gift of oneself to God and others. One should recognize one's own energies to know the limits of one's own resources. You know, we have to discover. Maybe what I say outwardly may not be completely true. There may be, it may be a partially partial truth, but there may be some other truth is hidden inside of me. 
So we must be able to, with spiritual accompaniment and discernment, we must be able to discover the new facts because of which we will be able to help a person to continue to live as uh, a consecrated religious. Next. So the, 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 the third portion of the second part, that is enkindle awareness, you know. This is really very important, sisters. We need to pay little attention, maybe five minutes extra we may take, I don't know. To be accompanied in time of trial, times of trial, the community dimension. See, the community, community is emphasized for us, JMJ sisters, especially in our constitution. So fraternity, support and perseverance. I want to pay attention to what is given in uh, pink color. For Francis invites us to make a home. Is our community a home? Yeah, our constitution, we read, our communities have to be evangelical homes, you know, ecclesial homes. To create a home, to create a home is to create bonds by simple everyday acts that all of us can perform. A home demands that everyone works together. Together. No one can be indifferent since each one is a stone needed to build home. And we are multicultural communities. So when we are thinking of expansion of mission sisters, I think we need to pay attention to the role and the dimension of the community in living our vocation in fidelity, creative fidelity and with the joy of perseverance. The very, very, very important for us. Yeah, That we need to be aware of relationships and co-responsible for possibilities emerging out of these which have significant practical consequences. Yeah. Next. A welcoming style. So are our communities welcoming? Do we have a welcoming style? Do we have a JMJ welcoming style? The document speaks three consequences. The first one is capacity for self-transcendence. I think we don't need explanation, okay? Second one is concerns the care that people give to each other. And third, emotional experience of the group. Mutual loving appreciation, responsible for each other's growth, receiving the gift of the other, to replace and to be replaced. This uh, reciprocity is based on the example of Jesus, naturally. So let us be welcoming, starting with the greeting in the morning till we say good night at the end of the day. Let us be welcoming, welcoming, adopt this style of Jesus who welcomed people always day and night. Next. To remain centered and firm in God, I think in gist, the document is emphasizing on this. Especially bringing us the scriptural word, bearing each other's burdens in daily life means accepting suffering, hardships and discomfort. We do have discomfort. Definitely there is no heaven on earth in JMJ community. Definitely. Let us accept that reality. But we can make it. Nothing is impossible. Our founder says nothing is impossible. You know, the invitation of Pope Francis of solid grounding in the God who loves and sustains us should be made as our own. This, this is very important that we make a solid ground in God so that that love of God leads us to love others. And this source of inner strength enables us to persevere amid life's ups and downs, but also to endure hostility, sometimes betrayal, and failings on the part of others. And one consoling scripture word is, if God is for us, who is against us? Nobody can be against us. If there is no fear, it is said in one of our hymns, there is no tear. If there is no fear, there is no tear. Okay, next. Yeah, so these are two parts, sisters. I think uh, it is something you carry in our mind. Of course, we don't have time for a pause and reflection because the organizer said one hour, one hour, only one hour. But I think we need in between a little bit of pause to think and silence, you know. So these are uh, two parts that the document has been emphasizing. Uh, I think I repeat, sisters, first thing is gazing and listening. Gazing and listening. Let us remember at least these words, if not everything. And secondly, enkindle, enkindling awareness of the reality of the situation of consecrated life in the present context of the world. So in order to deal with these problems, the document also has given Chapter 3 or Part 3, 
uh, when a person wants to separate from the institute, what are the canonical regulations and the practice of the dicastery? I, I, I don't think so. Of course, I have prepared, but I don't think so is that if at this moment it is necessary but because we are not going into detail the details of that. And But very especially, I, I request uh, the leadership teams and when we meet together, maybe individually as councils also, you can read together and then how to deal with and what are the processes that we need to adopt. I think you would agree with me. Okay, yeah. So the indult of departure and what what kind of indults we need to, you know, you know whether with the TPS or finally professed sisters and sister who stays away from the community without any information, with information, sometimes legally, sometimes uh, illegally. I mean, all these details are given here. Yeah. No, we are not going into that. And we come to the concluding part of that. Yeah. Yeah. How to dismiss uh, from the institute. There is a procedure, discretionary dispute, dispute, dismissal. Okay. So the conclusion, dear sisters, the car, the good document, as I said in the beginning, and I say the same thing even at the end. Let us remember just one word, remain in my love. I repeat umpteen times, remain in my love, John 15, 9, John 15, 9. It has five components. What does this mean? You know, first of all, the strength of a vocation has to be realized. And today we are facing with a loss of perseverance. We know that, you know, those who, the document says, those who leave must seriously question their reasons for the failure. Also, those who remain also seriously question their reasons for remaining. I have to question myself, why am I remaining in the congregation, in consecrated life? You know, why? Because we are mutually responsible and stewards to our brothers and sisters, especially the weakest ones. What is our stand? I'm asking myself, sisters, what is our stand towards the weakest in our communities, in our province, region, congregation? Yeah. And we are united in Christ as a distinctive family. We are called JMJ family, JMJ family. And bonds of fraternity must be cultivated. Cultivated, sisters, it doesn't easily come for us. With loyalty in order to foster mutual support. Mutual support. I may be the worst person. Doesn't matter. Can love change everything? Yes. Love conquers all. So mutual support for all in fulfilling the vocation of each. So youngsters are coming with their own background. So we need to really understand them, get into their shoes, get into their garden, you know, as somebody said, get into the guard, their garden and understand. We try to give the maximum support. Okay. That is first, first element is the strength of evocation. Next. Yeah. Remain in my love means, means Jesus requested his disciples during the last supper. Remain, remain remain. When, when when somebody comes to our house, whom we like, our favor, uh, friends, if they are going, why don't you remain for a day or for at least for a half a day? Don't we request? Yes. So Jesus is requesting his disciples remain, remain and remain in vital communion with Christ. And he's giving a gift that, gift of that. That is the strength of our vocation that we need to remain in our life. In God's love. This is the desire. This is for the disciples of yesterday. Today, in particular, for those who face the challenges running, the risk of losing the fervor and joy of their donation to Christ and the church. Beautiful heart locks are here. The diagram is, the image is very powerful. So sisters, I don't know, some of our sisters are going through the vocation crisis. It is a reality. Let us accept. We are losing the fervor of our religious life, our consecrated life, whatever be the reason. So let us become aware and turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I remain in your love. I remain forever, not provisionally, but I remain forever. Yeah, next. Next, a testament of love. To remain in God's love is a testament of love. Beautiful photograph taken on 30th. You know, Gospel of St. John re places the invitation to remain in love at a particular moment in the life of Jesus preceding Passover. We, we know the passion narratives, you know, just to bring, bring to our imagination. This hour was foretold at Cana, John 2, 4, and now moving towards its full fulfillment, Evangelist John focuses on the story of the Last Supper to bring to light his identity as the Son of God and that of his disciples. 
in an atmosphere of intimacy and share jesus opens his heart to transmit to his disciples in the form of a testament yeah do it in my memory you know that love that he not only has and gives but the love that he himself is not only making a covenant or giving a testament but jesus himself gave to the disciples and asked them to be the testament of his love and same thing is given to us when we are called to embrace religious life next disciples destined to bear fruit yeah the image and then we know we are called to bear fruit fruit that is enduring this is jesus farewell course farewell discourse dear sisters yeah so for this reason he asked the disciples to be rooted in his love to immerse themselves in the filial atmosphere of his existence and to live in the incessant exchange of love that exists between him and the father between him and the father and the whole uh, chapter 15 of john is a beautiful beautiful uh, uh, what what should i say uh, allegory for us you know wine and the branches that we receive the sap from the wine and we become fruitful bearers you know bear us of good branches and we bear the fruit that is enduring next Because, yeah so the secret of the disciples truthfulness is revealed in love yeah again john chapter 15 only this becomes the habitat of existence that they that they live in fruitfulness of with god's love at the origin of the love that jesus has for his disciples there is the love with which he he is loved by his father he says as my father loved me i love you definitely as we love one another we get back you know the source of love is the father's love and therefore he is asking to remain in love in god's love means to persevere yeah, to persevere yeah. the expression to remain in is repeated several times in the gospel of john to understand the symbolism of the wine wine dresser branch fruit in the perspective of perseverance yeah so the wine and the branches we know yeah and how st john speaks about that next so christ teaches us that to live in the flow of god's love to take a permanent residence there permanent residence that means our vocation to religious life has to become permanent and it has to become the gift of fidelity and the joy of perseverance and that is the condition to ensure that our love does not lose its order and boldness so the real fragrance of the gift of vocation has to be witnessed in our life and in our mission and the disciples are urged to remain in constant desire and commitment it's constant you know not for today and tomorrow alone and to adhere to the model of christ to avoid the drama of ab- abandonment of discipleship or the possible sterility of the vocation i mean words are simple sisters but these are very very strong abandonment of discipleship why do we get into that thought first of all you know it's again you know become aware of the realistic situations and why do we become this why do we become not fruitful sterile in our vocation it's it's a never ending question and never ending reflection so what allows us to remain in jesus love is the observance of his commandments the docile listening to his word changes the heart of disciples from servants to that of friends calling for a lasting friendship and this is the secret of remaining in god's love that we become lasting friends of jesus a master the faithful one who lived his life and we are following his example to live our life with creative fidelity in the joy of perseverance next i think we are coming to the end so that your joy may be full yeah <laughs> so to remain in love is to understood is to understand understood that love is service taking care of others and we read chapter 7 on governance sisters yeah we know that what is governance what is the essence of core of governance is to care for persons it is easy to say for me also it is easy but really we need to care for one another we have to grow we have to grow in that attitude basic attitude so that our joy will become full full and full and overflows 
so that all those who enter into our community all those who live with us in our community will experience this beautiful spiritual joy yeah next yeah uh, fidelity in the imminence of imminence between the vine and the branches between the master and the disciples is a gift of the mutual trust and we all need perseverance which is at the same time to keep our gaze fixed on jesus who leads us in our faith and brings it to perfection so the gaze fixing our attention on jesus so come what may let it be any cost i came for jesus i came for god i remain for god i remain in his love i proclaim his love i proclaim his good news of salvation yeah we cannot avoid the trial there are trial sisters but we need to go through it with love strengthening our union with jesus and re establish a stable friendship with christ and with others that brings forth fruit and complete joy and this is what pope francis repeatedly tells us a consecrated person has no reason to be sad to be gloom to be dreary so let us pick up our spirits and in tune with the theme of our bicentenary let us be enkindled re-enkindled with uh, the spirit of our founder so that we can move forward in our life and thanking god for the beautiful gift of vocation dear sisters and live it as the document says with creative fidelity experiencing the joy of perseverance you know and then and at the end of the document uh, uh, a prayer is composed uh, about mary as a faithful woman a faithful woman of perseverance of course it's it's a very very long prayer but we will have our uh, uh, intercession to mother mary a beautiful holy patron who is a, a solitary boast a solitary boast of human kind you know so she is our way she is our guide who will lead us again and again we say she will lead us and guide us to remain in god's love and last i want to conclude with the words of uh, cardinal carmelo may consecrated life not be a refuge no i want to take shelter here nor an escape from the world no it is a life option it is a life choice that must be chosen responsibly and seriously i did not think like that yeah young as we are we did not think but as we are getting matured and getting deeply immersed into the spirit and uh, charism of our congregation so we need to we need to understand that i have made a choice of life and it is a lifestyle in need of strong witnesses of joy coherence and and this is what uh, carmela says and uh, the final word i want to say the word of our founder my intention is not to make of you christian daughters no i want you to become perfect religious father matthias will may god bless all of us dear sisters and i want to thank the bcc for giving this opportunity beautiful opportunity for me to articulate some of our reflections together of course whatever i was able to do i try to put it in a in a way that's possible for me but only i request with folded hands sisters at least remember one word i say repeatedly i say remember remain in my love john 159 and the three parts that the document speaks about gazing and listening sit somewhere maybe amidst nature anywhere you like gazing and listening enkindling awareness and the temptation to abandon the institute to which we have made a covenant to god in the presence of the people of god made a covenant this is the realistic situation but let us all pray together as jhj family that god keeps us united with bonds of love unity and charity thank you and may god bless us thank you sister inamma for it was an outstanding presentation it's very appropriate session at this time of renewal that gave us new initiatives and stimulating experience as you have precisely mentioned that fidelity becomes a lifestyle expressed in joy which makes us available to embrace the demands of the pascal mystery with faith with renewed hope and trust only then that the yes forever 
always finds meaning and radiance. Thank you, sister, for your stirring words, which indeed enthused our hearts with great conviction to live our calling joyfully, in fidelity and perseverance in these challenging times. We shall imbibe the spirit that you have set before us by remaining in God's love, by working together and make our lives more radical.